Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we're gonna take off all the mysteries about the Costas Loop Carrier Recovery System. We have today simulation of a carrier recovery system. We have here diagrams of the Costas Loop, and we are going to understand why the Costas Loop works, understanding its error functions about the constellation of the signal. Let's go! Well, guys, when we search about Costa's loop, we always have these kind of figures here, the common diagrams of the topology, of the Costa's carrier recovery topology, and sometimes we have the mathematical description about how it works. But I think that the Costa's loop can be much better understood if we divide the Costa's loop in two main subsystems. And this will easy the understanding of the Costas loop design and it also gonna allow us, gonna enable us to understand why for a QPSK constellation we have this topology here and dividing the Costas loop in two subsystems we can change the error detector here, I, I'm calling this subsystem here the error detector and we can increase the order of the Costas loop even to an 8 PSK constellation with 8 points here this is the constellation I'm simulating here on Octave when we search Costas loop we see this diagram here I have the exact diagram we always see on the internet about this topology here in its input we have the radio frequency signal or the IF signal and this signal is modulated, is phase modulated with a BPSK constellation or a QPSK or a higher order constellation. The signal is divided in two mixers where the signal is mixed with a cosine signal and a sine signal, a cosine and sine local frequency generated by the numeric controlled oscillator. The mixed signals follows in two low pass filters where we have the baseband I and the baseband Q signals. I prefer to call these guys a default quadrature demodulator. This is nothing more than a common quadrature demodulator that is downsampling the RF or an IF signal here in its input and is generating the complex, the analytical signal represented by two arms here, the I and the Q components. For a BPSK constellation, we have a phase modulation here that is swapping the phase of the input. And when we see this from a constellation perspective, we, are see, we see this constellation here. The input signal has only two allowed phases, zero degrees or 108 degrees. And we can see it better here in this uh, image here. We have two phases allowed and the constellation points are not allowed to be in the Q region because the BPSK signal don't have any quadrature information. The two sidebands of a BPSK signal are equal, so we have only a real component in the analytical form of the baseband signal. And the Costas loop is trying to recover the carrier, okay, so we need to recover the carrier to generate two signals here, the cosine and sine local frequencies, they need to be exactly aligned to the transmitter carrier. So when we demodulate the baseband I and the baseband Q, we have this constellation here, where only the I component is changing, reflecting the changes in phase of the input signal. BPSK, we are swapping the phase between 0 and 108 degrees, so the constellation will be points in the I axis, changing from positive 1 to negative 1. And now we can understand much clearly why we have this multiplication here and why the Costas loop works for a BPSK signal. Because we are taking the baseband I signal, and multiplying by the baseband Q signal, okay? This is the common Costas loop, we can see it here when we search, this is the common Costas loop and when, and the only thing we are doing when we multiply, there's no magic here when we, when we see it in the first time and we don't have this explanation 
using two subsystems. We try to understand it from the mathematical perspective. But the mathematical perspective will not allow us to really understand how it works. And when we are multiplying the baseband I and the baseband Q signals, we are only generating an error signal to lock the PLL here. And the only thing that matters is that the error function generated by this error detector here is the correct error function for the constellation we need to detect. So if you want to detect a BPSK signal, guys, we need to have this constellation here when we have a zero, always that the point here, the I and Q, is in the correct position. And it needs to generate an error signal proportional to the error of the constellation. And here we can see it very well. If the detected carrier is right here over the correct point, we are generating as an error of zero. And this is why I'm drawing here the map with whites here. This, this color map here is only the error signal. When the when the carrier starts to deviate from the correct points, we need to generate an error signal that will rotate the constellation to the correct position. So if the received carrier is in this position here, we need to rotate it down. If the carrier is in this position here, we need to rotate it up. And the same applies to the other constellation point. If the detected constellation points here, we need to rotate the constellation, the local frequency, to that position, to a correct position, to, a, to an allowed position on the constellation. If the, received, if the received carrier phase is in this position here, we need to rotate it to the correct position here. So the error detector is only generating this error signal. And this error signal is fed back to the PLL topology, feeding this common topology here. This is only a PLL. It's only a PLL with the correct error detector. And now, if we want to increase the constellation, we only need to have an error detector that works for the constellation we have. So this explains this very strange topology here that when we look, we don't understand. If we search here for Q QPSK, QPSK Costas loop, we are going to see this topology all around. And when we see the mathematics, okay, it's a likelihood detector, it, it has all the mathematical description, this is fine. But why it works, guys? It works because when we take the sign of the I multiplied by the Q, take the sign of the Q multiplied by the I, and we subtract the two, we generate this error function here. This is the explanation. This error function here has a zero exactly over the correct points. And it generates the correct error signal to the correct direction Okay, so here the error is negative, here the error is positive, here the error is zero. Here the error is, well, positive or negative, positive or negative, I don't know my, my convention here now. And the same thing applies for all the dots here. All the allowed phases have an error of zero, and when the error deviates from these correct phases, allowed phases, we need to generate an error signal to correct the PLL. So the PLL will correct, will minimize this error function. This is the task of a closed loop system, is to minimize the error. The PLL will adjust the phases and frequencies of the NCO here to align the constellation to the correct error function. And now guys, when we search for 8PSK, 8PSK Costas loop, we don't see any diagram. Why? Because an 8PSK Costas loop is more like a magic, okay? People don't want to talk about how it works. Take a look here, guys. We don't have any diagram about how an 8PSK PSK Costas loop works. But what we need to do, because now we understand how the Costas loop works,
we can create an error function that generates the corrector error signal for an 8PSKC constellation, 8PSK constellation. So my idea was we can have a QPSK error detector here, exactly like this one here, okay? We generate a block of this and we put it here. We can rotate the constellation 45 degrees, common rotation, okay? You have the I and Q here and we need to rotate 45 degrees and we apply it to a QPSK detector again. And if we sun, if we, if we add the two error signals, we have this error function here that follows and it works. It, it locks to an 8PSK constellation fine. And we can see here it here on the simulation, guys. All these files are on the Patreon, okay? If you want to run these files, all these files are available on my Patreon account. So guys, we can see here the generated error function and we can see that it has the correct error and the error magnitude and sign is correct to make the Costas loop lock to the correct points here. Pretty nice. And here in the, here in the Octave simulation, we have here a BPSK Costas loop. Okay, let's simulate it here. Fine. Now we are demodulating an, an eight, uh, sorry, a BPSK constellation. And we can, we can see here in blue, the, I, the baseband I signal, and in orange, the baseband Q signal, and the Costas loop, the P, actually the PLL loop, will make the error go to zero, and this implies the error going to zero for a BPSK constellation implies that the baseband Q has zero signal because we have only two allowed, po allowed points and they lie here in the I axis. The Q axis has no information because we have only two allowed phases here. Okay, if we simulate here a QPSK Costas loop, now we have here a QPSK constellation and we can see here that the PLL will lock to a zero error condition, but now we have information in the baseband I signal and the baseband Q signal, because now we have information in the I axis here, in the horizontal axis, the I axis, and also in the quadrature axis here, in the vertical axis, okay? And if we simulate the 8PSK, we see now that we are demodulating, we can lock, we can see that it locks very quickly here, okay? And we have the, all the information about the signal here. This is the transmitted sim symbols here. And we can see the phase of the carrier changing here. Phase changing. And here the demodulated signal. Of course, guys, here we have carrier recovery and we don't have time recovery. This is why we have these dots here inside the uh, in, in wrong places here because it's the transitions between the, the, the symbols, okay? We are seeing also the transitions here, here because I don't have any sampler sampling the data with a time synchro synchronizer. Here we, we are only talking about the carrier recovery. And, and guys, this is how a BPSK demodulator, Costas loop demodulator works and how a QPSK Costas loop works and how an 8PSK Costas loop works. And now you understand it better that the only thing that matters here is the error function that we are generating, generating to, f to feedback here on the PLL. This is the only thing that matters. If the phase error, if the phase, if the error function has the correct error and the correct error direction to make the correct corrections, <laughs> the loop will lock correctly. My mind was blown when I understand it from this perspective. This really opened my mind. I always think it, how I can, how can I make a Costas loop lock to an 8PSK constellation? 
And after I understood it correctly, it was pretty easy. I only programmed this correct error function here and it works really, really well. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel. You can support the channel and have access to the file simulation files. Being a patron of the channel, link is in the description. Leave a comment, send to your friends, and I see you in the next video of All Electronics.